All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cool Times podcast, where we talk all things cool about the cold storage industry. Uh, this is my lovely life partner, business partner, Jenna Free. I am also your host, Vince Free. You might hear a little bit from me today, but maybe more from Jenna, you know. We all know how you like to hear yourself talk, babe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, guys, we are pumped for this podcast today. Um, we are joined by a gentleman who is one of our uh, one of our competitors. Yes, <laughs> and I love that. And and he's a great competitor of ours. He's a great friend of ours. Yes. I I've known this gentleman's father for many many years. Mm -hmm. The guest we have on today, he uh, he is from California. He went to Pepperdine in Malibu, really bougie. <laughs> it's uh, beautiful there. <laughs> it is. Uh, married, I think August of last year in 2021 Newlywed. to his beautiful wife, Haley. And gosh, I think he lives in Huntington Beach, California now, likes to surf, hang out, party. But man, this guy's a stud. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Stephen Hansen Jr. from Hansen Cold Storage. Hey, yeah. Welcome. Wow. What's what up, brother? <laughs> How's it going, guys? Oh, good. How are you? How is newlywed life? Um, I am doing great, and newlywed life is fantastic. I can't complain. We uh, had to push the wedding back a year for COVID, mm -hmm. but we finally made it happen, and it's it's been bliss ever since. Oh, it oh, is, yeah. isn't it? Babe? He's going to hear this. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're going to play this back to back. Babe, li listen to what I said about you. <laughs> yeah. Nothing but bliss. Yeah. We know all yeah. about that, today, my love. We do, totally. Yeah. Nothing but happiness year after year after year. After year. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you guys been married? Nine years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> Ish. Sure. ish we're close we're close to nine years yeah. nine years ish now yeah, yeah long time it goes fast though man it goes by real fast so enjoy yeah. and taking the moments right now and and you guys got a badass place in huntington beach california and and i uh, i remember watching some of the renovations you were doing you did this closet renovation yeah and i got a story about that because you you did a video on it and then you did like a time lapse video on it Oh, yeah, I stole your idea when we did the wallpaper behind us. I'm like, Jenna, we're doing a cool couple project. I let's time lapse it. I got that idea from you, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. That was awesome. I did watch your time lapse, and I was like, very cool. I don't know how to do wallpaper, so I was like, that's Neither awesome. Neither did we. Did we. <laughs> it's still sticking though, so we're okay right now. Yeah, it's funny because it. they say like apply a little bit of water, like let it set. Cause it's, it's got the uh, stickiness on the backside of the wallpaper, but when you get it wet, it, it, it like activates. activates the stickiness of the wallpaper. But we found out that you need to like spray a Drench ton it. of water on it. You're like <laughs> dousing this thing in water because then it becomes more pliable. It stays stickier longer. It was a lot easier after that. Now it's done. Well, that's good to know for my next drywall or uh, wallpaper run. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Well, speaking of wallpaper, that's not what we install, buddy. We install <laughs> insulated metal panels. <laughs> great segue. So, yeah, I know. Great segue. Let, so let, let's talk about that because Hanson Cold Storage Construction was established <laughs> by your father in 1989. Yes. And man, he, what a guy. I, I, I love your dad and, and he created an awesome company. And he's, I used to sell doors to him back in the day. And he was one of my favorite clients to sell to. Um, I knew that you one day would take over and join and all this <laughs> stuff. I just didn't know when. And, and there was a large gap from when you graduated to when you joined, uh, joined the company. So we want to, I guess, yeah, like learn about that. We, one of the things, if you've, for our listeners who's ever listened before, you know, we always ask like, how did you get into this industry? Obviously you were born into yeah. it into a family that was part of it but it seemed like did you know you were going to end up in it or was it something where you were like no I want to do my own thing and see how that works and you know this is always here if I'm interested yeah great question I uh well I guess it's always been in my blood mm -hmm. and so I would say growing up maybe once I could walk on a job site, you know, seven, eight years old, I'd, I'd go to job sites with my dad and 
I would look at everything and be amazed of, oh my gosh, I could never do this. This is so insane. Maybe I didn't think of that when I was six or seven, but when I started getting older and then when I want to say about eighth grade, I started working in the field uh, during summers. And so I still have photos of me, you know, with all the guys in the field, laying bass track, putting beetle and putting now, panels eighth, together. Eighth grade, California labor laws. Uh, we'll Google <laughs> that later, okay? Yeah, and I didn't get paid. <laughs> but, you were getting paid, just not in, you know, US yeah. currency. You were, you were being paid, though. <laughs> Very good experience. But so every summer during high school, I would work in the field. And I would always install panels. I would travel sometimes with our lead foreman, Rigo, who's absolutely wild. So <laughs> traveling with him was nuts. <laughs> and so then I, I actually would drive the truck. I think it was my senior year in high school. My dad was like, okay, I want you to drive the truck now. And I want you to deliver materials for all the job sites. You can really understand all materials and the logistics side of everything. Mm -hmm. So after that, I went to college. And I was like, I'm not doing this. I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't know how to do this. This is way too hard. I can't, you know, I don't know how my dad could look at a building and say, oh yeah, we'll put panels in here because there's just so many intricacies to it. So sure. what happened was I then graduated from college and I was working at uh, like a county supervisor. I wanted to go into politics or law school or something like that. Okay. And so I was working there. And then I started to, I don't know if I like this, this is not really for me. Mm -hmm. And so I went and worked for my dad like a year after I graduated, just kind of part-time, just while I was feeling out what I wanted to do. But what happened was I, he kind of took me under his wing and taught me how to bid a job. And so I bid my first job and then I got the job. So oh, then I had to run. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so then I had to run it as a project manager. <laughs> so I ran the job as a project manager, and then I did another job, and the rest is history. Just from then on, I've been an estimator and project manager, and my dad wouldn't let me leave, and we had <laughs> fun. And so it was it was kind of a cool story. I never thought I'd get in, but here I am. There's there's no way out now. Definitely Dude, not now. <laughs> not, no way out now. And the rush of selling a job. I mean, it's, it's yes. I can't describe it to, to anyone that hasn't sold anything in their life. I mean, when you, and when you're in sales and you land a job, man, it's, it's an amazing feeling. It is. It's a lot of fun. And my dad and I have a lot of fun doing it as well. Be to talk about, okay, I've done this and this is how, this is who I'm talking to. And, oh, I think we're going to get this one. So it's a, it's a fun dynamic, but yeah, selling a job. Once you get your first, you're hooked. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. For sure. You know all about that, don't you? <laughs> yes, sir, I do. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, tell me now, you have sisters that are working at the company, yes. correct? So what's it like having the whole family involved in the company now? Was it always oh, yeah. like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is definitely a Hanson run company. There's every, everywhere you look, there's a Hanson. It's like, uh oh, I could call my mom and she's like, how many panels did we get up today? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, the, the dynamic actually works very well. Um, it's very rare. And it was something that, you know, I was like, I hope this all works. I'm with my family every day. I'm working together. But we get along very well and the dynamics great. I work, Melissa works in our office. My mom's very involved. Elise is also involved. And so and what is she doing now? Uh, Elise or Melissa? Uh, Elise. Elise does some of our marketing and she, uh, which, which she's very good at. Uh, she's also a recruiter. And oh. so she does a little recruiting. And then Melissa is uh, office administration and kind of operations. Nice. Awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. And your mom is just keeping y'all in check. My mom is the overseer of all. And my dad won't admit it, but she is. <laughs> we all know that the women actually run the companies. That's so true. <laughs> that's what we have here, but we can relate to the family owned operated business because that's what we are. I mean, well, and I great. think there's such a level of trust there. Like, yeah, yeah. you're going to have your bickering and things like that because you're family and you can talk to each other that way. 
But I also think when it comes down to it, there is such a level of trust there between, yeah. you know, family members that we know, okay, we're all connected to this. We all have to, you know, maybe put this aside or put this aside and focus on what is best for our family run company. We all have, you know, stake in this. So yeah. that level of trust, there's something special about that. Yeah, I, I absolutely, I, I love working with the family because it's just, it, it's, it's a lifestyle more than just a job, you know, and exactly. you that's guys can attend to that. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's totally. a great way to put it. I love it. Well, let me ask you then, we ask this question to all of our uh, guests. And I imagine with being in the industry, as long as that you have, you've had a lot of different exposures to a lot of different cool stories. Do you have a cool moment or a cool story that sticks out in your mind that you're like, you know, yes, this industry is cool. It has something, you know, really fun to offer. And this is a story that, you know, kind of mm -hmm. exemplifies that. Yeah, absolutely. I have a couple cool moments that that ring a bell. And I'd say one of the first ones was building a freezer or cooler and then all of a sudden seeing a family member or a friend you know drink that product or eat that product or you go in your grocery store and you're like oh my gosh i know where this is from i built this this came through my freezer you know <laughs> and i feel like that's such a cool feeling knowing that what you're building is is a contribution to society yeah. And totally. that yeah. your friends and family are going to are using that product. And mm -hmm. it's it's a very neat feeling. Another one, I think this is the absolute this is yeah, this is the absolute coolest I've ever had was I went into a building, I want to say six or seven years ago, and I was doing an expansion of a freezer cooler. And when I think it was like a 20 year old freezer and I was going through kind of looking at everything. And I was like, gosh, this looks like how we build stuff. So I, I text my dad and I say, hey, did you work on this project? And he goes, yeah, I built it 20 years ago. Oh and so gosh. I said, oh, my gosh. And then day one, when I started putting panels up, I was like, my dad built this facility. And here I am 20 years later doing an expansion in the same facility. And it was just like the most surreal moment. Just this is so neat that this is a true legacy going on. Dude, that's <laughs> insane. I, yeah. I love it. That's, that's a really yeah. cool story. That's badass yeah. is what it is. That's cool. Oh, it was, it was very neat. Awesome. Awesome. Well, for all the listeners out there that, that might not know who Hanson Cold Storage Construction is, you want to give us like a 30,000 foot uh, overview of, of who's, who is Hanson Cold Storage Construction? Yeah. Well, Hanson Cold Storage Construction, it's a family owned and operated business. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously what we touched on, we install coolers, freezers, processing facilities, basically anything that's cold and has to do with insulated metal panels. I've been doing this for about eight years now on the project management estimating side. My dad's been in the industry for 40 years and basically we will travel. We like to stay West coast because that's where we're comfortable, but we'll follow our customers across the U S wherever they want to take us. Mm -hmm. But we love to uh, be in this industry and Panels are in our blood. Yeah, <laughs> I feel you there. And hey, we like you staying out west, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, you you stay in Texas and east, man. You get to man. cover it. I'll handle the west. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I got you, my friend. I got you. There's and more than enough for all of us out there. There, there is. It, it's a crazy industry right now, and everyone's super busy. So we're all very blessed to have that mm -hmm. going on right now. And I I love. I love bringing you up to, you know, my customers who are also your customers and are like, Hey, we need another bid or Hey, who, if I'm not bidding it, who should I use that? I, I bring up your name all the time. Now, I don't know I if you ever know that or like get that word, but I recommend you all the time because I know that I know what you're bringing to the table. I know that you're going to bring a family feel. I, uh, I care about this quality type of attitude and work. And, and I know you guys do awesome work. So, well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, dude, totally. But yeah, stay out West, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I like I that will. little backhanded. Kind of thing You're really good, there. but stay out West, bro. <laughs> I yeah. like, I, I, we like LA. I like being in LA. I like doing California jobs. It's just, that's where I'm comfortable. I know everything around the area. And so I don't, I don't want to go to Texas. 
<laughs> okay, you don't want to go to Texas. I was what? just going to say, there's a lot to know, to learn and know about doing business in California. So oh my gosh. try to keep that all Dude. in your brain and master that. Like, that's yeah. enough. Have you taken the California <laughs> licensing exam before? Yes. And yeah. How insane license? is that? It's it's not. I remember going into it and I, I took like the course and it was a three day course or something, but mm -hmm. it was pretty difficult. I passed, but it was same. It was and they don't tell you, they don't tell you how many you got right or wrong. It's just pass nope. fail. Yes. So so when I took it, I, I studied like crazy uh and, and and I'm a horrible test taker. And I just remember sitting there like hovering over the computer before I hit like the submit button that I was done, <laughs> like praying, like, please God, let this be it. And I, and I hit it and it's just like green light, you know, pass. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I yeah. did it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's, it's funny because all of the questions have nothing to do with cold storage or what we do. So we have to go learn about how to build a house basically and do all this stuff that we're never going to use ever and become masters at that. So we can pass the test. Hey, but we know how tall a toilet can be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's not cool. what we do. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, that's one thing I think the industry uh, could use is, you know, for all the, the contractors that do specific type of specialty trade, like have yes. something more geared towards, you know, for different states that require that trade, you know, license, have something geared a little bit more towards our specialty trade, because I quite frankly don't want to learn about how to build a, a residential house in every state. You know yes. what I mean? So uh, if, if there's one thing in the industry right now today, Stephen, that, that you've noticed that's either trending, uh, innovation, um, where do you, I guess, multi-question multi here, where do you see the industry going from here? And what innovation do you see that is going to be you know, different 10 years from now? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, the industry itself is on fire. It is absolutely booming. And I coined this term a few years ago, and I'm going to say it here. I call it the cold rush. It's Ooh. like the gold rush, but the cold rush. I like um, it. <laughs> yeah. No, our, our industry is definitely growing, and I think it's absolutely taking off. Um, some innovation is, that's pretty tough. I mean, we've been building boxes pretty similar for a long time, but I think the innovation is going to be going into how the uh, the automation during like the racking system and basically the uh, the staff inside the coolers is it's real that's starting to take off. You're seeing the 150 foot tall buildings now, which those used to not happen to my knowledge. But I think that these buildings are just getting bigger. They're getting taller. The racking is filling every inch. The people are going away inside, and there's just full automation, which it's going to be pretty wild in 10 years. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, from uh, an expense standpoint, when you in construction, land is expensive, right? Yes. So when you build yes. out, it's expensive, right? But once you acquire that land, I mean, you can build up. So when you build up, obviously you're paying for the cost of materials and construction built up, but that land all around you, like you, maybe you don't need as much land, right? Because yeah. when you build up, I mean, the land's free, right? The government hasn't found a way to tax us on building up yet. Tax air. Yeah. That's, <laughs> it, it's all cube now. And, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe we're going to have, you know, skyscrapers that are cold storage in the future. And you're going to see skylines of just cold storage buildings going all the way up. Think about it in New York or Los Angeles. You're not going to buy a big facility. You're just going to go as tall as you can. Oh, dude, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah Do you, ahead. does your company have, cause I mean, obviously California, Lots of people live there. There's not a lot of land space in certain areas. Do yeah. you guys do that where you build the very high, you know, facilities? Um, we haven't done any 120 foot or 150 foot yet. Uh, I've done an 85 footer and I think, okay. yeah, I don't see anything else coming up higher that I know of. Vince, have you heard of anything coming in California? <laughs> I'll text you, bro. I got you. <laughs> Yeah, but, but what we see a lot here in LA and California is because a lot of the buildings are already built out. So in the Midwest, East Coast, in areas with a lot of land, we're do, they're doing uh, steel buildings with building all out of exterior insulated metal panels. But in Los Angeles predominantly, it is almost all interior retrofits. You go into a 80-year-old building that is just an absolute mess. They drag us in and say, hey, I want some cold storage. What do I do? 
I'm like, okay, so <laughs> let me figure this out. So what's and, the advantage? What's the advantage of uh, a, a guy buying a, an 80 year old building that's, you know, concrete tilt and, and building inside of there? What's the advantage to the client to do that? So for in Los Angeles and California, they can buy a building that's in a good zoning location for close to LAX or the port of Los Angeles or Long Beach. So location is huge for the customers in Los Angeles and California. So what, what they do is they don't have any land that they can buy or a building that they're going to knock down. So they'll come in and say, hey, I do have a concrete building. Um, the property value is going to skyrocket once I buy it anyway. So let's turn this into cold storage because we don't have enough here and retrofit this whole thing. You're going to walk into a concrete building and you're going to open the door and it's going to all be cold storage. Uh, yeah. Speaking of land, I mean, I know, you know, Merino Valley, right. That, that area outside of Riverside. And, and I think people are starting to have to build new projects on new land way out there where there's yes. nothing going on. Right. Um, yeah. Is that just because of there's no land where all the dense population is, or do you think that people are moving out there because it's cheaper and they need the, the food and distribution out there too, because of that? Yes. Uh, both. Yes. To both of those questions. Yeah. The, the land is available, which actually probably isn't really available now. It was available a few years ago, but now people are going further East and nobody ever wanted to go over there even five years ago. Yeah. And so, there's nothing available in Los Angeles. And if there's a building that is, is going to be vacant or it goes for sale, it's bought within a second. Wow. And so people just, and it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. So people just have to go further out. And then that's where you can get some more land and then build a steel building with exterior IMP. On it. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely incredible. So uh, what is something, you know, in the industry that, that, some people might have like a misconception about the cold storage construction industry. Yeah. Have you encountered any? Cause I know we have, you know, oh, earlier yeah. in your career for sure. sure. Yeah. Um, well, everybody still thinks I build refrigerators in their house. <laughs> so <laughs> no, nobody, nobody gets it. <laughs> I get it. No, I, I, I get it. I got a back in my day of selling cold storage and high-speed doors. You know, I, I yeah. got a lot of phone calls saying, Hey, what do you know about this garage door? I'm like, huh? Like, no, I don't, that's not what I do. <laughs> I, I don't know. But I think the one of the big misconceptions is one that the size of these, these buildings and what product they use. I think it's just in kind of an unknown industry, it's getting more prevalent now, but a lot of people don't know it exists. Exactly. And so, yeah, you tell someone you, you do cold storage and like, I don't know. And then if you do kind of explain it, I don't think people understand the grasp of how big these buildings are and also the impact and need for these buildings. Totally. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about cold storage design and, and challenges. Um, I know a lot of our, our listeners kind of like this kind of topic. So uh, I have a cold storage pro on the line here that builds these things. So I I'm excited because you're our first guest that does what we do. So mm -hmm. this is exciting for me, but uh, think about a box and box, right? And, and for the people out there at box and boxes, you have an existing building and you build a cooler freezer inside that building. Um, so that's that coined the term box in box, mm -hmm. right? So a drop, you know, you have an IMP drop ceiling and there's two ways to do the IMP drop ceiling. I guess you, you, you know, the way that I know how I never know how with the ceiling tee, a standard ceiling tee that's hanging from the the joist. And then, uh, there's another way to do it when you use no ceiling T, but you're using like an upside down 16 gauge channel, right? Have you mm -hmm. ever seen that before? Yes. And, and then they, they cap it or whatever. And, and right. So it's hard to explain to listeners, the differences between the two. I think one is the old school way and one's the newer way, right? Correct. So what, what are, what do you prefer and what are the advantages of, of either or? Yeah. So the, the ceiling channel, the upside down channel, that's typically used on the older type of panel, which is a polystyrene EPS panel. Mm -hmm. And so the channel is, I guess, going to support sometimes a 10 inch thick or a 12 inch thick panel. Uh, it's a little bit more heavy duty. Mm -hmm. And then for the, what we like to use is the T, which is the T kit for a urethane panel. Mm -hmm. And there, I don't like using channel at all. 
because what happens with a channel is you have a piece of all thread which hangs from the ceiling. It penetrates through your panel all the way and into the interior cold. Obviously, you're going to insulate that rod, but it's going to also penetrate. So you're going to have an all thread rod through your ceiling and that's going to transfer heat. And then when you go to a T, you have an eyelet nut, which hopefully the listeners can know, <laughs> can yeah. Google it. Yeah. And it connects to your T. So your rod goes into your ceiling, but it doesn't penetrate completely on your ceiling. So you already have a better design for thermal transfer yep. immediately with your T. We use T all the time, I'd say 90%, but there are times where you have to do a longer span of maybe 20 foot on the ceiling. And you can do that with the polystyrene panel. And that's when you use your ceiling channel. Sure. But sure. I'm, I'm a T fan, T all day. I'm a tea guy too, man. I love yeah. it. I love talking technical stuff with you uh, because you know we can, and, and yeah. I, we live yeah. in that world with you. So well, you understand it, all of the dialogue, the dialogue, the language. Yeah, and one thing too is in LA, we have a lot of old coolers and a lot of old freezers that have been built that I demo, and then I'll redo them that were built by somebody else. And there's a cap, like a trim piece, that always goes over that upside down U channel you're talking about. Yep. And I take that off. And there's always water pouring out of it. And so, I mean, yeah. you go to somebody that built it, and I don't know how they built it on top, but I just always see leaks in a ceiling channel, but I don't see leaks in a T. So right. whatever theory there is, doesn't matter because I've seen it and I don't <laughs> like the chance. Hey, I, I agree with you hundred percent. So I'm a, you know, yeah. now that when you do that channel, the right way to do it is you actually have to spray foam underneath that U channel right to insulate it before you cap it right yes if you don't yes. insulate it that's the cheap way of doing it and and yeah. unfortunately i think that still exists out there that yeah. people do that and no void space allowed exactly exactly so uh speaking of a box and box terminology when you build a freezer steven do you like to run your panels down to the mud slab um or sometimes you um have like a picture like a concrete swimming pool out there that's 12 inches deep and you're going to have six inches of floor insulation and six inches of concrete. Do you like to run your freezer wall panels down in the mud slab or do you like to build the, um, the floor insulation down in that swimming pool, if you will, run that styrene board foam up to the finished floor of the concrete, pour your concrete main floor in that uh, bed of insulation, right? And then install yeah. your panel on finished floor. Yeah. So it's funny because my dad's a big time run the panel down to the sub slab kind of guy. Yeah. And I'm, I'm the dead opposite. I am a riser all day long. I, I like to too. go in and put the floor insulation in. I do a foam riser. They yeah. pour the concrete. I go do something else on the project. I build the cooler side yeah. and then, and then we're done. And the yeah. concrete gets poured. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big yeah. riser fan. I hate putting panels down to the mud slab. Yeah. And, and I think, there's advantages and disadvantages to both, really. Yes, yes. I think I think the panel going down to the mud slab is probably the better design, but I do a riser all the time and it works and, and you can still maintain that insulation and vapor barrier. But totally. I just, I hate doing the walls in there because then you have to do the ceiling because you don't want that concrete pour to push your walls out of plumb. So then and you're stuck. A lot of bracing. Then it's a lot of bracing up on top. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If because if, if you don't have time to get your ceiling in, you know, when you run the panels down on the mud slab, you're bracing every three, four, yeah. five, six panels to make sure when you pour the concrete, it's not moving your wall all over the place. Exactly. And then you're yeah. stuck in the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, the riser detail is my favorite too. It, I, I think it allows um, the biggest advantage is schedule, like you said. Yeah. Right? You get to the project early. You can first thing you do is lay the floor, walk away, they pour the concrete. And then you're doing other things while they pour that concrete it's curing you're doing the cooler or the cold dock or doing teas elsewhere in the building and then by the time that's ready to go you're moving right in and, and boom you're done yeah you know? so it's seamless yeah and then putting a panel on top of a column footing on the sub slab it's it's a nightmare just go with the <laughs> riser come on <laughs> It's true because it's <laughs> that, that footing's never level. It's never no. clean or, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like a bunch of pile of rocks and you're like, here, put this wall on here. It's like, no. Well, Jenna, enough about technical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you got any questions? <laughs> 
Well, I think you you always ask a question and maybe you don't want to ask it because this is our competitor. No, but- no, no, I do want to ask it. And <laughs> Steven's my boy, dude. And I, I, I would buy from him. So I'm going to ask you, why would someone buy from Hanson Cold Storage Construction versus the other guys? Not Freeze Construction. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say, <laughs> not, not, not you. Um, no. So, so what we have to offer obviously is the, the family partnership aspect to it. So the thing about cold storage is, is you can't, you can't really mess it up or else you're going to have a lot of problems. So we want to partner with our customer and we want to make sure everything's done right. We've been doing this for 40 years. Um, my dad's instilled a lot of his knowledge on all of our guys, our foremen and our, our field crews are extremely trained. And they've been doing this for a very long time. But at the end of the day, there's there's a way to do a project. You either want to do it the cheapest, which I don't want to do your job the cheapest. I want to do it the most competitive and I want to bring you the highest quality. And then the other way is, hey, I'm, I'm an end user and I don't know anything about cold storage and I need this to make money off of my business. This is something I need. So I want to partner with somebody that's going to take care of me and also that knows exactly what they're doing. So the two obvious ones are we have extreme experience and we've been doing this for a very long time and we know what we're doing. And then two, we're going to make sure that you're going to be okay and that your building is right and that you're doing things the right way. We're going to try to take care of our customer. So like family, exactly. Run businesses do. Exactly. We're, we're all about repeat business. We we're not the one and done guy. We're not looking for the one and done job. So we're, we're all about retaining our customers and getting them to the point where they, they can succeed so much with what product we just gave them that they're going to go build another one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Building relationships. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, dude, I, I, I'm sold. I want to buy from you right now. <laughs> I better not have a freezer or a cooler. What do I do? <laughs> hey, I know a guy that knows a guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You all know a guy that knows, you know, back in the day, we used to bounce off leads to each other all the time and, and, and we'd mess with each other for fun. We would yeah. always just oh mess God. around. And, and uh, why don't you tell a story? Cause I know <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh boy. <laughs> so this is I, honestly, and, and versus us versus the competitor, there's, we have great competitors and there's great people in this industry and that's why I love it. But I would sometimes be sitting at my desk and I'd get an email real quick and it's Vince free. And they says, Hey, bud, got a sick lead for you. It's really hot. Like, make sure you really tackle this one. And I look at it and it's like a eight foot by 10 foot AM PM cooler in <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> and so, and so every randomly for a gas station, like a walk in freezer for a gas yeah, for, station. <laughs> for a gas station. So, me and Vince started to randomly just every once in a while, someone would call, like I would get a call or an email from a guy that wants to buy six panels, hurry, hurry, hurry. We want cheap price. And, and they want it in three days. And I'd send it to Vince. Hey, you might want to take a look at this. This looks right up your alley. The hot so. one. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done uh, it in a while. I know. Well, oh, I can I tell you why we haven't soon. done it. I, I tell you why we haven't done it in a while. <laughs> Been a little busy. Heard- we're a little busy. We can barely keep our head above water now as it is. Yeah. No time for jokes with me. All right. <laughs> well, apparently no time for trade shows, man. I haven't seen it at a trade show in a while. Oh, I was at SIBA. Yeah. Yeah. I well, saw him. I, I didn't see you because I, well, I saw you, but I didn't see you. I was what? running around doing everything. You're um, el presidente. I was. You're all big time now. You're the king of SIBA. I'm past chair now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got to ask you then, you don't have to say, you don't have to say, what I think you're going to say, but what is your favorite trade show? It is a hundred percent SIBA. <laughs> and why? We'll Venmo you later. Yeah. Yeah. And why? Thank you. No. So, so SIBA was another point of my question, or when you asked the question, you know, what was something that very, very cool that happened to you? And, and SIBA was, was one of them because I remember the first time I went to SIBA, which was IAXIC at the time. And it really opened my eyes to what this industry is and all the people that are involved. And I saw my dad run up to everybody and, hey, hey, how's it going? So good to see you to all of our competitors. And I was like, this is so cool. It's like a cold storage fraternity. You know, you can go have some beers with with your competitors. And Mm -hmm. it just made me realize how tight knit and close this whole industry is. 
And it just seemed like it was a very comfortable and fun place to be in. I really enjoyed it. And so it kind of, that kind of sold me on, okay, this is what I want to do. And I want to be here because I feel like there's a good support group and there's a really good type family aspect about this whole industry. Yeah. yeah, That's true. I mean, that's, I think why a lot of people stay. Yeah. Because when you can build a career that you enjoy with a group of people that you enjoy, like that's, that's the best, right? Yeah. It's so true. It, it is all about family. And I know like there's a lot of competitors there of ours and, and GCs are seeing their competitors and spray foam guys are seeing their competitors and insulin metal panel manufacturers have all their competitors there. But at the end of the day, like it's, there's nothing better than just having great competition and being friends with them and even helping each other out, bouncing ideas off of each other. You know, Hey, Steven, I got this application going on this. Have you ever seen this before? how would you solve this? And, and you would give me an answer like that. You wouldn't even hesitate, you know, you Absolutely. might even be giving away one of your trade secrets, if you will. But, you know, honestly, I, I don't think you would ever hold back on that. You would no. help out. Yeah. And that, that's, what's very cool because you can, you can call someone from Arizona and say, Hey, I'm having this problem and I'm in a very high heat area. Have you ever seen this? Because I know you build in Arizona and they're like, yes, you need to use this product. Or you go to the East Coast with super high humidity. Hey, I'm building here and this is what I'm trying to do. And this is what my application will be. And they say, you should do this because this is what I'm used to. And it's, I don't know, it's great. Everybody just helps everyone out. I mean, there's a few that don't, but <laughs> for the most part. Uh, you're, you're, for the you're not most, wrong. Part, <laughs> you're not wrong. For the most part, we were really lucky. Yeah. In yeah. So I want to be cognizant of your time. Um, Go, you go ahead. Well, I would just real quick yeah. want our audience to know, Stephen, if yeah. they want to learn more about Hanson, more about your family run business, like where do they go? Who do they contact? How would they get in touch with you? So all the social media is basically, but the best one is our website. It really is an extension of what we do in our portfolio. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Googling HansonCold.com, you can, you can find us on our website. We've got Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, a Facebook, and also you can call the office, or or you can go on Spotify and and type in Hanson Brothers, and then you got Umbop on the that pops up. And <laughs> that's I actually we'll love be sure it. to do that later. <laughs> so your website's HansonCold.com. Yes, sir. And Hanson with an E, E N. Hanson with an E. Awesome. Exactly. HansonCold.com. I love it. Right, I like it. <clears throat> Well, uh, yeah, we want to be cognizant of your time. We're getting down to the end of the show here. My One of my favorite segments, uh, the cool rapid round questions. Um, uh, currently, this one's sponsored by Freeze Construction. So with that being said, I'm going to ask you uh, this or that questions. And you are going to, without hesitation, say one or the other. Let's go. You ready? <laughs> yeah. All right. Box and box or ground up? Box and box all day. <laughs> cold beer or cold drink cold drink i don't drink too much beer Te oh. Te there you go tequila or whiskey tequila ammonia refrigeration or freon refrigeration uh, uh i like big jobs which ammonia but freon because i can get in get out okay i like it so you're working in the field, uh, your butylene panels, you like the 10 ounce butyl tubes or the 20 ounce sausage butyl? <laughs> 10 ounce, <laughs> 10 ounce, no sausage. Okay. <laughs> you heard it first guys, Steven Hansen says no sausage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Newport Beach or Laguna Beach? Newport. All right, beach side or pool side? Beach side. Knew it. Ping pong or air hockey? Ping pong all day. Mm -hmm. Vince or Jenna? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That's amazing. That's, that is, <laughs> that's good. I'll take you both. Hey, wow. thank you. That, that's obviously, how obviously it. Jenna. <laughs> obviously, I'd take Jenna too. Yeah, Jenna. But, but, the last, most important question. What? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah, my favorite question of all: Justin Timberlake or Justin Bieber? Justin Timberlake. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, I like Bieber too, but Justin Timberlake all day. 
I love it. Mm. Absolutely. I almost forgot about that one. I know. I was <laughs> like, what? You, you ask everyone this I one. I do <laughs> ask everybody that one. Uh, well, hey, listen, uh, any last uh, things, comments, questions, concerns, anyone, anything you want to say to the audience? Just just want to say fans out there. Yeah. Hey fans. Uh, no, just want to say thank you very much for having me on. This was, this was very fun and very happy to see you guys and can't wait to see you guys in the near future. Yes. Yeah, good yeah. to see you. We'll look forward to seeing you in person soon, hopefully. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, uh, you guys can, uh, find our work, uh, for cool times podcast on our website, cool times yes. You guys can find us on all the social medias, just like you, man. We got the Facebook, <laughs> the Twitter, the Instagram and LinkedIn. Uh, we will show, you know, 30, 60 second clips of all of our interviews there, but the, the main link to listen to the full episode, you can find us on Apple podcasts and other watch the video on YouTube streaming methods. Uh, yeah, YouTube. So look us up on YouTube. You can watch the video. We can see how pretty your face is, and, <laughs> you know, hit that red subscribe button out there. Give us a shout out. Give us a like, give us a five-star rating out there. We appreciate it as always. Uh, Steven Hansen Jr. from Hansen Cold Storage Construction. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Good to see you. Thank you. All right. See you. Guys. Have a good one, buddy. We'll see you soon.